pace of modern war speeds up, the motorcyclist becomes of more and more vital importance, not only for the carrying of messages, but for liaison and reconnaissance work. The highly mechanized Canadian Army was quick to recognize the importance of well-trained riders. But good motorcyclists cannot be trained by poor instructors, and so future instructors are given special courses at a Canadian training school in England. Training begins in the classroom. Cutaway models reveal the secrets of the internal combustion engine, while blackboard diagrams explain complicated electrical systems. Each man is assigned a motorcycle soon after his arrival at the school. From then on, he is as responsible for it as for his rifle or for his personal kit. On it, he must lavish the care of the last war cavalryman for his horse. In the course of normal maintenance, the horse is overhauled once a week. In this way, the student learns how to care for the machine on which his life may one day depend. starting is in the throttle and spark controls. When they're set right, the bike starts at the first kick. Well, sometimes. To get the feel of their bikes and gain confidence in handling them, the student's first ride is round and round the barrack square. By braking, accelerating, and changing gears, they keep a regular interval and learn to balance and control their machines. Even at this early stage, the instructors can usually tell who will make the best riders. They can also tell those who have little chance of finishing the course. These are soon weeded out. The open highway is the next step for the student riders. The valuable part of this experience is the frequent use of gears, the result of going at higher speeds. The various hand signals and other rules of the road are all a part of highway training. The machine must not be steered. Corners are taken by swinging the weight of the body to one side or the other. Life becomes more complicated as the students learn the art of bushwhacking. The trick in cross-country work is to stand up on the footrests, letting the knees take the shocks of uneven ground. In training dispatch riders especially, is this type of cross-country riding vital. For in wartime, roads become targets for artillery and bombers. And well known to every motorcyclist is the trick of tying a strong cable across the road. Riding a series of small ridges without leaving the ground teaches control of acceleration. On the upgrade, the riders lean well back to get traction. On the way down, they use the valve lifter to prevent compression in the cylinder. Water obstacles are all in the day's work. Streams up to a foot and a half deep can be safely forded, as long as the throttle is wide open, speed being controlled by the clutch. If the engine stalls, the machine must be pushed clear before restarting. Loose sand is one of the most difficult surfaces for motorcycle riding. Even with skilled riders, skids and spills are frequent. So when these Canadian Army riders can negotiate successfully the ups and downs of the sand hills, they are ready to return to their units. Highly trained men possessing the confidence of sure knowledge. dispatch rider is now ready to do his job. A job of vital importance, but one of great danger and bodily strain. 
An isolated infantry platoon has been ordered to attack at 0600 hours. But aerial reconnaissance has shown that the troops will advance into a trap. They must be warned. They must delay the attack until artillery fire is brought to bear. They have no wireless set. A runner wouldn't make it in time. The only way to reach them is by motorcycle. The message must get through. And the Don R sets out to get it through. Through hell and high water. end and a blessed moment of rest, a rest well earned by a job well done. <laughs>